After three and a half months on the hard in Guatemala, it's time to head back to sea, do some exploring, and finally end up back in Florida. We go via the Honduras Bay Islands, where we do some diving and exploring. We've set it out in the chapters, so you can see the journey. When we get back to West Palm, we also bump into several other Nordhaven 62s. Downtown Livingston, getting money to check out of Guatemala. Livingston's at the entrance of the real Dulce, and it's where you have to check out and collect your exit documentation called your Zarpe. This is the building where you have to go, and uh, the agent handles the documentation. We actually took our dinghy down to Livingston to check out came back to the boat and then picked up the anchor and headed down the Rio Dulce again. We were in awe once again as we came down the river. It is an amazing sight. So we've arrived in Livingston. Um, I think Carrie was getting excited because she can see the open ocean out there. I know we are. So we're just waiting for Hector. Hector's the guy who's going to help pull us over the bar, the sandbar. And we've arranged to meet him at 5 p.m. and it's only 16.30 so we have to wait a bit for him. So here we are being towed. My captain's just told me the depth is two and a half feet already. Churning out some wake here. Look at that. It was an overnight passage to Roatan with lots of squalls. Nevertheless, we made the journey relatively easily to be greeted by these jumping dolphins on arrival at Roatan. We were going to Barefoot Key first to take on fuel. It involved a tricky passage around the reef and the marina came out to guide us in. Here you can see us now tied up at Barefoot Key in Roatan. So here we are in uh, Roatan and the marina has arranged a fuel truck to come and um, bring us a thousand gallons of fuel so we're busy uploading thousand gallons of gas diesel talk to me baby <laughs> so here we've just arrived in Roatan and we they've organized this spectacular sunset for us uh, so we had to rush out to the ocean pavilion to enjoy the sunset what do you think of the marina the marina is it's very cute I mean we arrived they brought somebody to take us to immigration we checked in um, took like five minutes in the office it took 10 times as long to actually get there. They arranged a truck to bring fuel for us. Didn't pay so a fine for overstay in Honduras? No additional payment. In fact, in the in the immigration office, there's a sign that says your check-in is free. Cool. Very While we were at Barefoot Key, we managed to go diving with Barefoot Divers on one of their two boats. It was quite windy, but we still managed to get underwater. Here is a jawfish being photographed by me. It gives you some indication of the size. While I was swimming around with my big camera, Leslie was using her GoPro to shoot the video.
I also managed to get a photograph of Leslie, the Admiral, in her uh, pose underwater. In this next video you can see as she narrows down on the tube that there's an arrow crab inside. And then I've got a couple of shots of a fairy baslet and a blenny. That blenny is uh, smaller than a pencil so it's really quite a, a nice shot actually. We spent a week at Barefoot Key and then it was time to move on. So we were, this is us leaving again. You can see us facing south as we're coming out, southwest actually, as we're coming out and uh, tracking. Here we begin to turn towards the exit. Do right, you see the sticks? We were headed down to Utila to catch up with one of our friends that we had made when we were in the Rio Dulce, Ricardo on Tumbleweed. We were to meet him in the anchorage and then go for lunch ashore in Utila. A lot of swearing going on. Here we are approaching Utila. It was reasonably calm, a lot of dive boats around. There's a lot of uh, dive training that goes on here in Utila. This is us going past Tumbleweed, his steel boat, and taking the dinghy into the supermarket dinghy dock. The supermarket is right behind the dock that we're approaching here. Having parked the dinghy, we took a walk down the only road in Utila. You can see it is narrow and has a lot of three-wheel and two-wheel vehicles moving by. It's quite a unique little place, um, but it wasn't somewhere that we stayed for very long. We were greeted with lots of rain, but also a very beautiful rainbow the morning that we were leaving. The journey back up to Roatan was rough and full of bad squalls. Tumbleweed was also traveling with us, but while we were doing eight knots, they were struggling to make four. On arrival back in uh, Roatan, we anchored in French Harbor, next to Little French and Big French Key. There's a lot of snorkeling you can do there too. It's a protected area with some very large lobsters. Here I dove on the anchor just to check that it was holding and managed to use the GoPro for a cool shot of uh, Karawa. We also enjoyed some uh, pretty nice sunsets sitting on the aft deck of the boat. One of the great things about uh, French Key is Fantasy Island marina bar which opens at five o'clock and uh, a lot of the cruisers go there for some uh, two dollar rum and cokes we're having one of those days pouring oh it's raining hard suddenly the second squall that we've had today after about a week in french harbor we decided it was time to move on to guanaja here is our speeded up exit out of the uh, harbour. It looked like a lovely day until we turned the corner to head up to Guanaja and we were soon faced with the next squall. Although we didn't video it, we had some huge swells further up Roatan on our way to Guanaja. Fortunately, uh, the squall had by then passed. You can see on this chart where Utila, Roatan and Guanaja are. We then headed to our anchorage, which is on the northwest side of Guanaja, only to be greeted with yet another squall and a lot of rain. 
not to worry. The next day it was beautiful and we were able to get out and do some snorkeling. I think the snorkeling here is truly world class and here you can see the Admiral snorkeling just below the surface. I was also able to snorkel on a wall and this is some of the footage there. It really doesn't do justice to the fantastic snorkeling that exists in this area. It was a beautiful spot. One of the things that we also enjoyed was a full moon and the moon rising over the cliffs in the evening. It was a little bit of a swell so we didn't stay as long as we would have liked and soon it was time to start preparations to make our journey from Guanaja up to Marathon. Here I am checking the engine room, checking the oil in the main engine before we set sail for Marathon. Luckily the morning did bring calmer waters and a beautiful sunrise. We did have a mixture of weather en route back. So here we are on the start of day two. We're just off the north coast of uh, Cuba. And day two is day three, huh? Well, we've had two nights. So yeah, day three, two nights. <laughs> um, and the conditions are great. I thought the conditions last night were great. What do you think? What do I think? Mm. I don't need to think because you know everything. I know, but I'll try and let you have a go. <laughs> Take two. Take two. The start of our third day at sea. We're off the north coast of Cuba. I'm hoping to get to Marathon by this this time tomorrow-ish and conditions have been great conditions during the night I thought were great what do you think? I think happy birthday to you oh thank you <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah it's been pretty good um, it's as expected a little bit of uh, wind countering the current which gives us a little bit of chop but it's not much we're doing eight and a half knots I, I definitely think we've got like a 24 hour run left now to marathon get inside the reef system and we'll decide whether to anchor or push on a bit further. Okay. As we passed up the northern coast of Cuba about 10 miles offshore the weather was fantastic so I used the opportunity to get the drone up and get some great pictures of Carigua. So there's a car carrier <coughs> passing us 0.6 miles away. He's doing 17 knots we're doing 7. Here we are approaching Key West on, this is the fourth day at sea. We're not actually going into Key West, we're going to go up Hawks Channel. Hopefully the conditions will be a bit better in Hawks Channel. If they aren't better, we'll just come back into the ocean and keep going. We're heading for West Palm Beach. Yeah. 
day at sea and now we're tired and conditions are worsening so we're trying to find a dock for tonight in Marathon. Fortunately we found a berth at Safe Harbour Marathon and we were able to celebrate the Admiral's birthday at a great restaurant with an amazing sunset. It's been a very windy day and now it's finally calmed down. Getting ready for us tomorrow when we leave Marathon. What a fantastic sunset. Well, you can just imagine Key West right now. Everybody on the, yeah. at Mallory Square. Departing Marathon, 6.35 a.m. Approaching the Cape Florida Lighthouse with Miami in the distance and Stillsville around to the left side, we are approaching Key Biscayne and coming down the channel markers, we will go past Stillsville and then anchor for the night. We decided to make a run for Fort Lauderdale. Leslie's son Richard had joined us for a few days and we decided we wanted to get up to somewhere better than being anchored. It was quite rough. I'm the sun. <laughs> Pretty rough out there at the moment. Whoa. Still smiling though. <laughs> Still smiling. Maybe after crossings and then every... You can feel it. Yeah. You can feel it beneath it. I kind of look at it and decide if it needs it or not. Yeah. Thursday morning. What a beautiful, beautiful morning down here at Bahia Mar Marina in uh, Fort Lauderdale. We're going to be leaving shortly to head up to West Palm. So after four days at Bahia Mar, we are leaving Fort Lauderdale. Richard has gone back to his uh, day job as a boatswain on board a mega yacht. The weather is now beautiful and calm and we had a lovely run up to West Palm. As we approached the Lake Worth Inlet after four and a half months away, we are greeted by Lady K Nordhaven 6229 out on a survey trial with a prospective new owner. She is soon to be named Endurance. We navigated our way into Lake Worth and made our way up to anchor at Old Port Cove where we were joined by Lady Kay again. 24 hours later, Nordhaven N6232 Zarpe arrives in Old Port Cove and we take the dinghy over to help tie her up. They've been on the go from the northeast for a few days now. And then it's time to clean our boat and get the salt off after the journey. Thanks for watching. See you on the other side.